Hey everybody, it's Peggy. I'm back again with another video. Today I am going to talk about nesting. Nesting is what happens when the bobbin thread starts to suck up into the machine and makes these big giant loopy knots. And usually, usually when it happens, you notice something's wrong. You'll, no, you'll usually notice it right after a uh, bobbin, right after a thread change when you're changing colors. And usually what happens is all this stuff here get stuck so you're under the machine trying to dig it out you gotta you have to get under there with your whatever with your with your with a little tiny with either a tiny pair of scissors or a um, thread cutter you've popped it out and now you're kind of stuck and today I'm going to show you today I'm going to show you the process once you get this off I'm going to show you the process of how to set this back up because what happens is if you don't if you don't deal with this properly, then you're going to wreck your fabric. If you don't deal with the machine properly, it's just going to keep doing it because now you've probably got loose threads inside your machine. So we're going to go through this in order. Hopefully it's not going to take me that long to explain it to you. But as always, remember that usually my explanations take longer than actually doing it for yourself because I want to make sure you guys also understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So first thing you have to fix is your fabric. This is something that I started to say on my last video when I was showing how to how to rewind a bobbin. I started saying, oh, I made it a point. I decided to make it a point that whenever I, and then I got distracted, never finished a sentence. Whenever I experience a screw up to um, whenever possible, stop, grab the camera and show you how to fix it. So this is the second one that's happened. This is This is the second time that I've had to stop and fix a thing. So I've stopped and grabbed my camera, show you how it's done. So getting started. For starters, we want to salvage the fabric. When this happens, it, it when this happens, you quite often it's very it's it's very common when these types of stuff happens, because it knots into the machine in a way that you can't really get it out of the machine without a lot of work. It can quite often happen that this fabric tears, gets holes, gets whatever. So the chance that you may have to not you know replace the fabric is there. And if you've got all kinds of holes, then you will have to worry about that. If you're lucky, I was lucky I got this out without tearing. So what you do is ignore the front for now. The front, see the front, front looks nice. It's very tempting. Actually, you can just, if, if you can get to these, if you can get to these stitches, if you're using a, um, this was just basting. So the stitches are fairly far apart. So if you can just get to these stitches, just, just start cutting them. See how much see how much is pulling through like it's not just the bob and thread that's nesting it's making big loops of everything. So if if you can um take this out from the front it'll be a lot less of a mess and you just take them up. If you've got really really if I'm <laughs> are you noticing my ex oh my my wife's over across the room there I'm like are you noticing how I'm saying if like I'm like I don't know. Anyway, if you have really fine stitches on the front or if it's really severe, severely knotted, you might not be able to get your thread, you, know, you might not be able to get your stitch ripper in from the front. If that's the case, just come through the back and just start, be careful, double, double check that you're not getting into the fabric, obviously, and just take it out in chunks. Don't agonize too much. You're not saving anything here at this point. And then just start, just start re ripping it up. Anyway, um, because this is working from the front, I'm going to go back to the front. So just get in here, take out what you can. Do, 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 do. This actually wasn't a bad one. Um, I got lucky. Uh, I quite often have to take these out from the back. And so because everything's so looped, you're going to get big strings of thread from the front. So what you do now... Obviously, obviously these are nice and long and I can just grab them with my fingers, but let's assume that you can't. This is what a really good fine pair of tweezers is for, to just start taking these out. If something is stuck, leave it. Come back for your uh, stitch ripper. Find it again. Leave it. See if there's something you can pick out, which there happens to be something I can pick out. Do that. That one's still sticking. Come back to the back. Get your. This is black on black, unfortunately, and I, I, I you can't. I, there's not really any way to force this to happen. 
Um, I could grab, I could have grabbed a uh, piece of white and put it through there to see if it was going to continue to happen, but there is a chance of damaging your machine this when, when this happens. If a knot is bad enough, you could find yourself with a little bit of machine damage. But I will say that in the four years and six machines that I've had doing sewing for every day, all day, uh, I've only had that happen once. I had something that was so, I, I, I got a piece that was so knotted up that in order that I had to, in order to get the, um, in order to get the uh, thread out, because you have to get it off the machine first. I'm over here. You have to get it off the machine first. In order to get it off the machine, I ended up having to, I ended up pulling too hard and um, damaging my, um, my thread cutter. So the possibility of damaging your machine does exist. So take your time when you, okay. So uh, let's, stay, let's stay on the fabric for a bit, because like I said, there is two things to fix. Okay. I've got everything out. I've double checked. Everything's out. So this is not damaged. This was not damaged. Actually, that's the wrong spot. Where's the right spot? I'm not even finding the spot now. So I guess I did okay, huh? So you're just going to double check, make sure everything out, comes out. Now for me, I'm going to back up a little bit so that we can chillax a little. Now for me, I like to rough cut my fabric first, which means I cut it more or less to shape and then I um, put in lines. So if we assume, let's assume that in doing so, I've damaged the fabric in this section, then you can either resize your project, make it a little bit smaller, which I've done. I've had, I've had this kind of thing happen and went, well, I don't like the way that, I don't like the way this looks now. You know, I don't like the way this looks now, so I guess I have to make it a little smaller. You know, just redo, redo any lines that you're doing. Obviously, if it's, if you're working on a specific project, you may not have that luxury. What you can also do, if you pre-cut your fabric like this, like, look what I've got here. I've got my line here. So let's assume, let's assume that this is, let's assume that this is all damaged now. Well, if I've got enough space, I can just bring everything in an inch or a half inch. Most seams are a quarter inch. So if I can just, re if I can just shift everything down, so I move this in a half an inch and then I move the other side out a half an inch, you might be able to adjust your fabric to keep going. So never panic when this happens. One of the, one of the worst things you can do is just start. The worst thing you can do is grab your fabric and start <coughs> trying to peel it out that way. When it's, when it's um, knotted up like that, all you're doing, if you're, if you're trying too hard, all you're doing is literally tightening what knots that are there and making it even more likely that you're not going to get this thread out without ripping your fabric. So we've got that done. Pretty quick, pretty basic, pretty easy. It's not hard. It's not hard. Take your time. Don't panic. The biggest chance, the biggest chance of, the biggest chance, let me just bring the machine over now. Now it's time for the machine. This is, this is the part that's not going to be as much fun. Now, let's see what I can do for lighting here for you guys, because this is important that you see what I'm doing. Okay, so now what's going on? Two, th two things are going on. So let's just get a tiny piece of fabric and let's get a tiny piece of fabric that I should have had from the beginning. Okay, so what happens is you're doing your sewing, you're doing this, it's stuck. So what happens is that you, off you have to get underneath here, into here, quite often with only like a couple of millimeters of space to work with because this is, once that, once that looping happens, it really ties it down to here. It really ties it all down to the underside here. So sometimes you're in there with a stitch ripper. You can take a stitch ripper, take a stitch ripper, find the, find the area of resistance, push forward. You're hoping for the best. I'm not, this is, that's the part that I hate. So I'm probably going to do the worst part of explaining it. But what ends up happening is sometimes in the process of getting it out of here, you may have to literally cut the fabric and leave it behind. And you really don't want to do that. You don't want to do that if you don't have to. But once you get your fabric off, if you can get your fabric off the machine without having to cut the fabric away in order to remove it, the, you can't do anything else until the fabric's off the machine. So if you can get it away without moving it, that's how you take, that's how you fix that part. So what's happening next, 
Let me see if I can get a little bit better lighting in here because we're gonna, you got, oh, well, I, I can see, I can see. I just wanna make sure that the, uh, that's a little better. That's better than, let's get it on that side. There we go, that's a little better. Is that better? Let's hope that that's better. Let's bring that in a little bit. Okay. So what's happening here, what's happening here now, underneath this machine, you have whatever, whatever you cut, you're not, okay, you're not, you're almost never going to get your fabric out without reaching in and cutting it, which means the extra threads are now inside the machine. So what you're going to do, your machine does come, do I have it? Okay. This machine comes with that. That's your little screwdriver. Let's, let's actually use a little screwdriver so you guys can see how it goes. So there's a screw here and a screw here. There's another one back here, just out of sight. So what you do is you take your screws, you have, okay, let's back up, let's back up. I'm going to back up for a second. You have two options. If you can see the extra threads sticking out the top, you can use your tweezers. I'm not, I'm not seeing any extra thread. You can use your tweezers and pull them out, do a test stitch. Every now and again, you'll get lucky. Okay. Every now and again, you'll get lucky. And once you get those threads out, you'll be able to continue sewing as normal. But if you're not lucky, it doesn't work out that way, then you have to take this piece off. So just these are, these are not difficult. They're just, once you get them loosened up, I just go in here. Once you get them loosened up, you just um, start moving your finger kind of clockwise and they'll come right up. Make sure you set them aside. Both screws are very, it's very rare. This is, this is pretty common for almost every um, sewing machine. My one sewing, my, 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 my big uh, Janome over there, it actually has a, uh, a latch that you just lift. So if you are concerned, take the needle and the foot off to give yourself more working room. And you're just gonna take this off. Take this off, set it aside. Set the screws aside. The screws are the same size. There's nothing special about them. Obviously, if you don't have them, you cannot sew because you can't sew over this. Okay. So now we're going to come in just a little closer. And I don't know if you can see that here. I'm juggling lights over here because I got, I want to make sure you guys, I don't know if you can see this. See that? There's the thread that I had to cut. There's the thread that I had to cut. So I have to get that out. So to get that out, the best way to get that out safely is to gently take out your bobbin. Gently, I don't know if you saw that, but the thread was still a little bit uh, connected in there. It was, just, it was just tangled in something. Now, this piece here tips up and comes out. And now that we've got, now that we've got that, that's just the spool holder. That's where your spool goes. This is, these are common. They just slide in, slide out. Nothing's, just a little wiggle, they'll go fine. Now, let's get in a little closer. Let's get my light up a little closer. See if I can, see if I can get a, there we go. There's a better view for you guys. Okay, ignore the weird noises. That's the light I'm holding. See this? See all that thread? If I just go by what I could see and didn't get in here and continue doing this, then I was just gonna end up. Okay, that one's stuck on the thread cutter. So I've gotten this stuff out. Whoops, I dropped something, be right back. I dropped my tweezers. These are, um, let's see if I can see a brand name. Urban something. These are actually tweezers from the makeup department. Lisa might know exactly which ones they came from. Okay, so. We're going to take our time and we're not going to panic. I hope you guys can still see okay. It looks like the lighting dropped into a good place. We're going to take it. We're going to take our time. We're not going to panic. I still have this thread. This thread is attached to the thread cutter. It's tangled up in the thread cutter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop, I'm going to leave everything open. I'm going to drop my foot down because this is an automatic thread cutter. Let's cross our fingers. And once the thread cutter triggered, Thread cutter will not work with the foot up, put the foot back up. So once the thread cutter actually triggered, there was nothing for it to cut, 
but it pushed the arm out so that I could just um, hold on to that piece of thread and pull it out. And of course, if the thread had been smaller, I would have just snagged it with the tweezers. And then I did not have to pull hard. I just had to wait for it to happen. So that's how you do that. So you just basically slowly take your time. Don't, don't do too, don't, don't go crazy. Don't be pulling at things and keep in mind, where are you? I can't see them on this machine. Um, when the machine operates, when the machine moves, it's very difficult to see, but if you look at this piece back here, that piece back there, it's moving, okay? There's a couple of small springs in here, uh, and they're underneath and they're difficult to find and difficult to see. But the point being is that you do not want to go, oh my God, there might be more thread, let's dig into the, oh, let's dig into every gap and opening that we can find looking for thread. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Now what you can do, this also came from the makeup department. It is a e.l.f. eye care brush. E.l.f. eye care brush, because they're nice and soft. They're nice and soft. The bristles aren't likely to come out. And then I just go like that. I don't have to clean it right now, but since it's open, I might as well take out any obvious dust that I see. So let's get rid of that and just brush it brush it off on, um, on, a, on a dry piece of fabric. And I'm just gonna take a quick little I'm not, I'm not shoving way down into these holes. I'm just taking a quick little, um, yep, I can't, I cannot see any other piece of thread. Okay. That's a bit of overkill. If you have a really, really bad knot, or if you find that your machine's knotting a lot, then you're going to want to take care of that. So what we're going to do, this is all done. We're just going to take this. So this guy, he, this, this guy here has a, they are, these, these are almost all identical almost all identical. So you have a little cup area, that's where the bobbin goes, and you have this little scoop area, that's that's indented. So you hold it with all this weird stuff, goes forward, drop it in, and if it's not dropped in right, oh my God, it seems to be a little stuck. Do it again, do it again, and sometimes if you give I mean, sometimes if you give that a little wiggle by, by, by you know, a little back and forth wiggle by moving the, um, ar the, 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 the turner at the end, then it can help you just wiggle it back into place. You don't have to go crazy. No huge motions required. And that's it. So now we've made sure that the machine is cleaned out because if you leave that thread behind, you saw that knot of thread. If you leave that behind, even if you can stitch for the next little while, it will happen again it's a guarantee. It's, it's an absolute guarantee that it's going to happen again. So what causes this? I'm going to pop this guy back out. I'm going to leave this guy. Yeah, I'm going to leave this guy right here. I'm not going to put this on yet because it's just going to make it a little bit harder to see. We're going to, let's pretend that the plate is back on. So when you're, when you're threading your machine, you thread it like that. The thread comes off from the top towards you. Okay. Then you have to take your thread and get it to go into a little slot that's right there. And you can see it, the little slot, a little slot. My thread just rolled away. Okay, the little slot is right there, right there, that little tiny slot. So what can happen is the thread rolls away and you have to go fish it off money your machine is what happens. Let's go get my thread. Where'd you go? Oh my God, it's way over here. It is like escaping, man. So what happens is you're putting, in, you're putting in your thread and you've gotten distracted and you're putting it in this way. I can't even do it. If you get distracted and put it in with the thread coming off to the right, it's backwards, which means that it's likely going to cause knotting. Um, you drop it in. You have to make sure that it's not getting snagged on anything else while you do this. And you just draw it backwards until the thread is past that little gap and then bring it forward again. So maybe you've, yeah, see, I just got it snagged on something up here, right? Oh, that's where it's supposed to snag. Never mind. So maybe you've brought it back too far and you snagged it back here before snagging it. It can snag funny. That's all I'm saying. Um, so the biggest, the biggest issue is that sometimes your thread goes on backwards 
that's that's usually that's that happens to a lot of beginners. So when you put when you're putting your machine back together, leave the bobbin out because the minute you try to do this, the extra loop of thread is it's got nowhere to go yet. So you'll mess the, you will mess this up. No, you won't mess this up. This one has a little tab. Make sure the tab goes underneath. Drop it into place. Do that. Okay. Second cause of this. Second cause of this that comes from the bobbin. Do I have one? Do I have one that's at or near the right spot for that? Well, that one might. Okay. Second cause. So you just put your you put your you put your screws back in to finger tight. If you screw these down too tight, two things are going to happen. It's going to be really difficult for you to open this up the next time you need to open it. And please understand, you will need to open this sooner or later, right? There are people who, oh my God, my nest. There are people their 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 fabric their their thread nests up. They run the machine straight to the um, straight to the um, the repair the repair guy, and that's this is about a hundred and fifty dollar repair that I'm showing you how to do for free. So just. Oh, it's starting to get a little snug. It's starting to get a little snug that much. That's it. That's that's as tight as you want it. So once it starts to snug, do 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 do. Let's go. And again, this is if I were doing this just okay, so a little tiny bit snug. It's facing exactly to you, and now it's off by the tiniest bit. Barely finger tight. Barely, barely finger tight. If you tighten these up too much, it can sometimes put pressure in a way that will actually keep the machine from working properly. So what's the other thing that can happen? So if you put your bobbin in backwards, it will tangle up. Nope, it's not doing it. I thought it was. Okay. As you get near, when you're, when you're, when you're threading a bobbin, do, 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 do. Let's show you how this works. Okay. I'm going to put this up here just to get it. Oh, I'm going to do that. Ha. Okay. When you're threading a bobbin, this goes through here. Do, 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 do. And then you're threading it onto the machine, right? <laughs> and then it's falling off because it's not going to work. I really want you guys to see this because the minute you see it, the minute, if you, the minute you spot this, you're going to go, oh, so you're, so you're, you're winding a bobbin, right? I don't have one that's currently doing it. I was going to save you guys one the next time it happened. Okay. So you're getting to the end of your bobbin. Now, when you're threading a bobbin, you put your thing through like this, you run it on the machine, and this fills up your bobbin. So now, that's your bobbin. That's your bobbin, and that's fine. That's coming through normally, right? Well, this piece here, when you wind on your bobbin, you've cut this at some point. Now look at that. So that's your bobbin, but for some reason, some reason, you know, you're coming to the end of your bobbin, or maybe this just didn't catch properly, but for some reason, the your inside piece is now sticking out. And if it gets tangled up in with everything else, as you're sewing, it may loosen off, get longer, get longer, and then become a tangle hazard and start tangling things up when it's, this, is the, this is what you're using to sew with, but this is just flouncing around in there, getting in the way. So this can happen when you're coming up to the end of a bobbin and it's not a guaranteed risk. It happens, but it's not some, if it was a huge major issue, people would be refusing to use bobbin, you know, people would be demanding a redesign on bobbins. So it can happen if that, if the inside piece of your thread on your, on your winding area, if the inside piece, if that can happen, if the inside piece has been, um, um, released in some way because then it's just an extra piece of thread flopping around in there get just waiting to tangle up into something the third thing that can happen which is seems to be to for me at least the most common and let us back up let us back up and rearrange the camera just a bit the third thing and most likely thing hi i'm rearranging my camera you gotta wait for me here okay so the third thing that is most likely to happen is that when you are threading your Threading, when you are threading your machine, this machine has one, okay, just count them with me. This, the thread has to be properly in place here, and it doesn't just go in here. There's a small tab under there that it also has to catch. So it has to go one, two. 
This is already labeled number four, by the way. So one, two, three. Oh yeah, so okay, okay, wait a second. One, two, three, four, five, six. It has six different things to go through and stuff is happening in each one of these areas. As a matter of fact, if I had the genome yet, I could just pop it open and show you. Hey, anyway, if something slips out of whatever it's supposed to be in or it's not fully engaged properly, it's also, okay, down here, if you miss the, if you miss the loop down here, oops, it's just down out of sight. Here we go. Here we go. So if you miss the uh, little thread holder here, you're fine. Um, it can only, um, now it can, for some, if for some reason you've managed to get distracted and thread, like say you thread your needle but for by hand and for some reason you thread it back, back to front, that's going to be a problem. Anyway, so that can happen. I grabbed the wrong one. My God, I'm getting, you guys, you guys are distracting me and making me nervous. Okay, wait, see, look. This just shifted. It's not where it's supposed to be. That was all my fault that it shifted because I wasn't paying attention. And that's sometimes all it takes. I didn't do it on purpose even. I literally just got distracted. Okay, so this goes up here. This goes to over here. This is this this uh, this is how you start. This is how you start your thread on this. Okay, so there you go. So there's that. So that's three ways that it can happen. And don't be intimidated because I'll sew, for, I'll sew for a week, two weeks, three weeks without this happening at all. And I sew all the bloody time, okay? It's guaranteed that it's going to happen sooner or later, but it's not guaranteed that it's gonna happen every five bloody minutes for you. So you don't have to worry too much about that. But when it happens, don't run straight to the repair guy and spend $150 to get this done because you don't have to. Okay, so now it has happened. I'm not 100% sure why it happened. I've re-threaded, so basically get everything cleaned out, re redo your, you have to redo your bobbin anyway, but also take your thread out and re-thread the machine just on the off chance that this has happened from up here, right? Now take a piece of scrap. Another reason to keep scraps around. I'm literally pulling these from the garbage pail. <laughs> And that's okay because I'm just testing. Now, I do know that I'm sewing. I do know that I'm sewing two pieces of fabric together, so I'm going to fold it over, right? And then I'm just going to test it, and I'm going to go like this. And and if it immediately um, does it again, don't panic. It could be that you just missed a little piece of thread, and you have to open it up and take a second look underneath. That's usually what it turns out to be. Um, Okay, so you're never gonna see it from the top because this is a problem that happens from underneath. So it will always look like this. You will never know until you turn it over. And I'm fine, it's fixed. Okay, so in order here, be careful and take your time getting all the thread back out of your, out of your fabric because unless you've already had to cut or damage your fabric in some way to begin with, it just turned off on me. Okay, where was I at? Okay, so I, I have to, I have to, where was I again? Okay, so open this up and get your stuff out. Redo your, re-thread re your bobbin, obviously, because it's had to come out in order to do this. Re-thread your machine from the top because if something's gone wrong here, you're fine. Uh, when you are doing this, you do not have to use a lot of pressure or a lot of force. You may have to use some force to get into here. But just remember that if you have to use that much force, you probably just need to start cutting away the fabric. Um, if it's that, it can become that knotted. It's rare, but it can happen. Um, and the only spot, the only spot that I had any resistance that I had to like, oh, that's stuck. I was able to check and see what it was stuck to. It was stuck to the thread cutter. So I just held it with light pressure, activated the thread cutter, and it came right away. Um, then I put it all back together, finger tightening, did that. So what causes it is a bobbin that is losing its, a, a bobbin where the other end of the thread has popped loose and is becoming an obstacle in there. Um, the bobbins may be threaded backwards, which it, it happens. Um, the top thread's not threaded properly. Other things that can happen, um, other things that can happen, some types of fabric are sticky. 
I don't know how to describe this. Some types of fabric can be, um, can like, some, sometimes, every now and again it is the fabric. If you've got like a defective spot in your fabric or something like that, it could cause it to happen. What you could also have is a long piece of, um, like if you have a long piece of thread of some kind on the back of your, on the, on the back here that you're just, that you just don't see, then when you, then when you sew over it, you're, you're sewing over it, there's a big long piece of thread of some, yeah, so, so that piece of thread is stuck here. I'm sewing past it, don't see it. Well, this is black on black. I'm, if this is on the bottom and I'm sewing through, sewing past it and don't see this big long piece of thread, it can get shoved down into the machine and become the obstacle that causes it not, not to happen. So keeping your work area tidy is important. And that's really about it. So there's the, the things that can cause it aren't that horrible, aren't that time consuming, and it's not too bad. Cleaning it up is just a matter of time, a little, a little bit of time, a little bit of patience. And as I told you at the beginning, explaining this takes about five times longer than just doing it. So yeah, that's it. That's done. And that's how you do it. I think I, I think I hit on all the main things. If you still have questions or need more information, I mean, if you're, if you're sewing and this is happening to you a lot, um, then yeah, check in, ask, ask any questions. If I know the answer, I'm happy to share. If I don't know the answer and you're reading through the comments and you know the answer, absolutely. Please share. If I, if you've got more information to add, absolutely share it. My God, there's, there's always more stuff to be learned no matter how much experience you've got. And that's it. This is how to deal with unknotting the knots. <laughs> unknotting the knots. I can't even say it right. Anyway, and as a thank you for watching this, I'm going to finish up this cloth and then I'm going to do a giveaway. Okay, guys, that's it. That is how to deal with nesting in your fabric. I'm going to go off and edit this so it actually sounds coherent um, because that would be fun. And I'm also going to take the cloth that I was working on and I'm going to finish it up and I'm going to do a giveaway. So if you want this cloth, it's going to be an 18 by 18 inch two-sided lovely uh, black. This is called, uh, I think this is the one that's called canvas or grunge. I can't remember. Anyway, and that as your topper, uh, it's going to be an 18 by 18 inch reversible cloth that you can use as a tarot cloth or as an accent piece, as a tablecloth, as whatever you want to use it for. And that is free to, who, uh, that is, that is going to be free, free shipping. The only thing I'll be asking you for if you win it is your mailing address and we will go from there. And that's about it. Um, I hope this video was helpful. I hope it gave you some good information to use. I hope it took away a lot of the, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, cause for anxiety or concern. I'm, I hope that if this is something that's happened to you in the past, that you now have learned enough to be able to do it yourself instead of taking it in for repairs at about a hundred and a hundred, hundred to hundred and fifty dollars a pop to get somebody to do this for you. Cause that's how much it costs to get a machine repaired. So you don't, you definitely don't want to be running in over something like this. Anyway, anyway. So thanks for hanging out with me. This has been fun. Um, if you like what you're seeing and want to and want to make sure you catch the next one, like, subscribe, hit the bell. You know the drill. You know you know all the stuff. Um, and otherwise, go below, find that uh, find that link to the uh, to the form, and just enter your email. Enter enter your oh your name and your email address. I need your name and your I'll, I'll need your name and your email address. That's it. And good luck. Hope you win it. Um, and I will have, I will contact the winner within, I guess we're going to put it up probably next Monday. So Monday, so maybe the, the, maybe on the weekend, we'll do the draw, give everybody a week, see the video, get their entries in. And then um, we will announce that, then I'll update the description with the name of the winner. And we'll go from there and make sure that they get that. All the things, all the happy things. And in the meantime, I'm going to get going because I've got to sew this thing up. So I will see you next time. Bye.